I can go get a job, do construction, and get in twenty dollars an hour. You know, what I mean, but busting your ass for what? I mean, for your family, yeah, but. It's an interesting mental battle that you have to do as a fighter. It's not just physically being there. That night was actually the first night that I got supervised visits with my daughter in eight months. You know, I have a family. I'm a you know full-time worker, full-time student, all these things I've got going on. I mean, that's what I do. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter in everything. I fight for my son. I fight for my job. I fight for everything. I got two kids, man. I want to put them through college, you know. Right now I'm working two jobs. Bust up my ass. Countless hours of blood, sweat, and determination. Two opponents with a common goal that only one will realize. Everything reduced to this single defining moment. But it's not the entire story. Experience the fight alongside those who lived it. Watch as the fighters tell their side of the story. No Holds Barred. This season on No Holds Barred, we take you to one of the top regional MMA shows in the country, Showdown Fights, a young organization with just 13 shows under its belt. Showdown is home to some of the nation's most respected names in MMA and fastest up-and-comers. First, we'll take a look at two of the region's biggest personalities in an event that was years in the making. Postponed by controversy, Jan Jorgensen versus Aaron Magro would become Showdown's highest anticipated fight of the year and would go down as one of the organization's most exciting and memorable fights in its history. Jorgensen, a former BYU football star, transitioned smoothly into a blossoming MMA career by racking up four straight wins and no losses. His size, speed, and strength proved time and again too much for his opponents, but there were those who questioned the strength of that record. I want to see someone challenge Jan. I want to see Jan go three hard rounds and still see his hand get raised with a guy that's worth being in the cage with him. Not a guy who's overweight and has trained jiu-jitsu and talks a lot of trash, so it's entertaining to see him get beat up by Jan. Aaron Magro was just the man to test Jorgensen's place in the ring. Jan Jorgensen hasn't really truly been challenged. His past two fights, he walked through the guys. So Aaron Magro finally has stepped up and really challenged Jan. Like many, Aaron wasn't sure Jan belonged. He does not have a strong jiu-jitsu game. His punches are wide and looping. He doesn't have crisp punches. And he just wants to lay on you and then hit you until the ref stops the fight. But just hours before these two would meet in the cage, a shocking turn of events would prevent the fight from taking place. The events that followed set the stage for a feud that would build tension for years to come. We had a fight that was scheduled. It was supposed to be my pro debut. He'd had a few pro fights under his belt, and I had a positive drug test going into it. That ended up being a mistake. Got everything taken care of with blood work. and But what happened was, as I tested positive for uh, for opiates, and so the fight never happened. I was baffled because I didn't know where it had come from. Then I realized after talking to a couple of people, I had someone ask me if I'd eaten any poppy seeds lately, and it just happened that I was looking for some quick digesting carbs before I went in there, and I bought a big poppy seed muffin before I had gotten to the venue. I talked to a PSUAC commissioner. I asked him what test they do. You know, who's the manufacturer? And I actually contacted the manufacturer and asked one of their QA people, you know, hey, there's a uh, false positive came up. And I asked him, is it possible you can eat a poppy seed muffin, you know, an hour or two hours before and show up positive on your tests? And I can't remember how many uh, nanograms per deciliter it was. I think it was around 1,200 was the test, the standard that uh, the uh, athletic commission here does. And Chief Flat says it's impossible. I think he was beat up. I think he was sore. I think he maybe popped a pill or two. You're not just going to pee dirty unless there was something wrong with the test, but they tested him twice. There, two of them aren't going to mess up. Two of the tests aren't going to mess up. If you know anything about drug tests, the dipstick is not very reliable. Any NCAA, any commission, any any top level group sends it 
to a, a lab and gets it done. I got my blood work done as fast as I could. I had nothing to hide and it came back clean. So if you want to rely on, if you want to go on the unreliable test or the more reliable one, make up your own mind. Do I believe he did it? I have no proof one way or another. All I know is my belief that if he said a poppy seed muffin did it and I'm hearing from the manufacturers of the drug test saying that's impossible, then I'm going to take that for what's worth, but he passed the second test, albeit many, many hours afterwards. Do I think he could have done something? Possible, but do I know? No. So to me, now it's a, it's a moot point. What caused the most drama was the lead up to the fight. And, you know, everybody's excited for it. You know, my family, everybody's going there. And then all of a sudden, fight's canceled. And then, you know, Jan's, you know, talking to his fans and apologizing to everybody else what had happened. But never once he, you know, apologized, you know, to his opponent. You know, because I took a lot of time out of my life. You know, I have a family. I'm a, you know, full-time worker, full-time student, all these things I've got going on. And, you know, I conditioned myself and worked my butt off to give him a good fight, to give the fans a good fight. And not once was he like, you know what, sorry. You know, even just that. So yeah, I was, I was pretty pissed off. With no clear consensus of who was right and who was wrong, one thing was certain. The only way to solve this dispute was to give them one more chance to settle the score. Showdown Fights did just that. Before we walk out, Jan is pacing back and forth, and I'm just bouncing, and I'm staring at him the whole time, and he would barely make eye contact and come right back. To me, he looked nervous. No doubt about it, Tanny, there's some bad blood between these two guys. Aaron's been waiting for this fight for a long time. We're now go six foot tall, 237 pounds, fighting out of Sandy, Utah, making his way into the cage. To get a, a fight hyped up, you know, I'll be the jerk. Why not play the bad guy? And I really did. I really wanted people to watch the promo and say, I want to go watch that fight because I want to see Jan kick his ass. I'm not scared of you. I don't care how big you are. I don't care where you played football. This is the cage. And the moment you try to take me down, you're in my world. Get ready for the hurt. And I think we probably got more people in there because of their love for Jan, but more importantly, their hatred of me. Jan, the Saint Jorgensen, you see his crew. We've got Demarcus Johnson, We've got Jason Mertlick. Everyone up. loves Jan. Um, walking out to this fight, I was actually strangely confident. For a lot of my fights, I get pretty nervous, but there seemed to be a calm before this fight, and for me to put my finger on as to why, I can't really tell you. Uh, I just felt good all the way around coming into this. This part, where you're getting Vaselined up and you're about to step in is always kind of a surreal experience because you're experiencing something that you watch a lot and you always think about how awesome it would be to do that. But when you're actually doing it, it's almost like you're living in a dream state. And that's the only, the only way I know really how to describe it. I don't get nervous for fights because to me, I don't have a, a real fear of, you know, getting knocked out or getting tapped out or any of that stuff. This is fun. This is really, this is entertaining for me. I, I enjoy this kind of stuff. And I remember looking over at Aaron and thinking he looked in better shape than I thought he did during uh, weigh-ins. I don't know if that was my mind playing tricks on me or what. You just see my jello move around. It's really good for body, absorbing a lot of force, that jello. That was one of my strategies, coming as fat as possible. This is always interesting, and they bring you up to touch gloves. There's so many emotions that are going through. But I started looking down, and I felt him trying to stare through me and intimidate me, so I felt like I needed to look up and show that I wasn't afraid. All right, well, here we go. Jan Jorgensen versus Aaron Navarro, who is the best heavyweight in the state of Utah. Well, this will determine it right here. 
Both of them defeated him with a touch of the gloves. Time for action. I really didn't expect him to be this aggressive with the punches and I think he felt like if he was gonna beat me he had to do it early and be really aggressive early. He wants to see how Jan reacts when somebody's aggressive. Yeah, that, and that's exactly what he told me in pre-fight. He said, I want to see how Jan acts when someone's coming after him. Because most of the guys Jan fights, you know, they're on their heels. Jan's coming to them. He'd take a hit and I didn't know whether or not it was hurting him because he just kind of do a reset. Like his face would show a little bit of motion and all of a sudden reset back to normal. Then a big, nice right over the top. The jam looks like he's in a little better those. shape this time, doesn't he? He does, he looks like he's fit. See how he kind of has that little wobble with his head, you know, kind of like, did, 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 I'm in a fight. You know, when I hit him with hard shots, it was, ooh, I got him a little bit and all of a sudden back to that. You always question, can I take that punch? Can I take that hit? Can I take it when he brings his best? Oh, and a big knee from underneath the Magro. And then it's some big shots over the top. He threw that knee all the way up there. Oh, oh beautiful nice. hook shot cross. combination. Nice shot. There he goes again, right back to normal. Jan, nothing's hurting him. Nice cover up though, nice, nice. Protect. Jan oh, one trying for to breathe. Right there. Jan trying to breathe, stay relaxed as much as he can. Magro still pressing some action. He is. I wouldn't say, he, I don't think he greased, but I think he just he was, had a good sweat on him, and I, I just couldn't even hold on to him. Oh, but he got heated. Punch right there. Oh! And then Jan threw a big one over the top and you know, connected to the left side of it. This is actually where I got caught a few times. Try to work some submission. Oh, but he threw two big shots! Big shots on Jan! And this was the first time I had gotten hit with big shots in a fight, and he hit me with some great, really good uppercuts and really comes at me. And he went over the top and underneath and hit him with two oh, solid nice uppercuts. Jan. Jan bringing a knee up nice. Came under the knee and hit him with the uppercut twice. And look like it rattled Jan a little bit. Jan needs to throw the underhooks, try to get <clears throat> try to get position right here, doesn't he? Right there, there's that uppercut. Oh! And another connecting shot. It was new territory for me. Hadn't happened to me before. It was really eye-opening to know that I can get hit. I'm not invincible and there's a chance that I could lose one of these. It was new territory for me. Hadn't happened to me before. It was really eye-opening to know that I can get hit, I'm not invincible, and there's a chance that I could lose one of these. Right on the chin of Jan Jorgensen, but he keeps moving. Jan's got to be careful in this clinch, because every time he's had this clinch and they were up against the fence, Magro threw that uppercut to land. I make sure I come back at him to show that I'm not hurt, that I can keep going, and that was my plan going, go, why I went back at him the way I did. Right here where we're just kind of getting a little bit of rest and then pushing him against the cage. You know, I'm trying to grab his ankle or, or whatnot and it's just slipping. Like instantly, my hands are sliding everywhere. You know, try to do a foot stomp here or there. Rough you know, you can tell that. though, I mean, those shots hurt, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's taking a ton yeah, out of him. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it did, he regained his composure real quick. But I like that stop for drive that rolls and stuff, so there's not enough going on. But he started to fire some really good jabs straight, and my nose is already bleeding pretty good. I can't even breathe anymore. You see the look on his face, his nose is a little bloody. I think he said to himself, like, okay, like I just gave this guy my, my best shot and he's still just coming at me. The, the grinding on the cage like this is probably the most tiring thing in a fight. Yeah. What does he need to do? Well, as he's backing up, he's pushing him against the cage. He should use the momentum and turn him into the cage himself. Turn him into the fence. Right, turn him into the fence to play the turn, you know, the turning game. And as he's pushing him, just let him keep going. He, he was pretty good with those knee strikes. Most of them didn't really phase me at all. You see me just throwing knees and 
one of the things that I try to do while I'm fighting is just stay active. I don't ever want the other guy to really believe that I'm more tired than he is. I'm stuck in the air and my strategy with how much I was breathing was hopefully I was breathing heavy enough to where he couldn't breathe any oxygen because I was stealing it all. And maybe that would wind him. All right, Johnny, tell me, wow. man. I mean, back and forth, each well, of them I'm landed you, some man, shots. Magro landed some big shots, and he came out the aggressor. It was a good. It was a good first round. I I think I never, you know, found out by the the judges who won that first round. But I I think I definitely had that first round. I remember Demarcus. I had Demarcus Johnson there in my corner, and among with Jason and uh, Jerem. But I remember Demarcus saying. Again, I, that round was close. They're telling me, you know, you got to move around a little more. You're, you've won that round. Try to take it to the ground. And the whole time I'm like, he's, it's slick. He's just, you know. I, I can't tell you who won that first round. Um, it was very close. And I just knew that if I wanted to decisively win the fight, which is what I want to do in every fight, I had to win round two and round three. I could have lost round one. I didn't want to lose. I was worried that I had lost that round. And so that's really all I'm focused on right now is winning this round. He kind of, we kind of had a little smile, kind of, he kind of had a little smile going and stuff. He looks at me and you can even see in my face right now. I'm kind of like, okay, that one minute break was not enough. Can I have a three or four minute break? You know, and I'm bloodied up and, and Jan hardly has any kind of uh, mark on him, which, you know, I don't know, is he Nordic or a Viking or something where they just don't bleed? Watching these two big boys mix it up inside the cage here at the showdown fights at the UCCU Center. There goes. I realized that Aaron's getting a little tired here, that he had slowed down that pace from that first round, and that I was moving a little bit better than he was. He came out, and I think he really let it all hang out in that first round. And I don't know if he realized that we had two more rounds to fight. I was thinking, I can't breathe. My nose is completely you know, clogged full of blood, and you know, I've got to somehow take it to him and try to have a good couple flurries and either make him try to take me down or try to finish the fight. But I knew that I was in trouble. What happened here is, you know, he had his hands out and he's pawing. He kind of caught my eye a little bit, but it wasn't, it was one of those where you feel like you got something in your eye and it kind of goes away. Here, I, I really think like he, I think that he is faking. I don't think that I got him with anything. I wasn't very happy when Josh stopped it because I knew that I hadn't got him with anything illegal. No, I really didn't fake it at all because, I mean, if you go back to it, he kind of paused a little bit and it, it's not like a, 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 like a direct poke in the eye. It was more like a little slap, barely. I would never fake stuff like that, you know? I don't do the Josh Koshrek school of faking injuries, you know. I, I, I do the, you know, you know, whatever happens, happens, and be honest about it. You know how people say in a fight you can't hear the crowd? I could hear them, and man, they gave me so much crap for that. They booed, and they were just so mad about, oh, how dare you stop the fight because you got poked in the eye, and I'm like, well, you know, it was a natural reaction. I'm like, okay, I got hit a little bit, you know, but it wasn't a big deal. That's why I continued on. And he even said sorry, and I'm like, yeah, it's okay, keep going. And then, yeah, like, I'm already tired, and those straight punches, and man, he hits me with a body shot, I think coming up real soon, because he realizes I'm just my head straight back, but right there, that right there, like the little bit of cardio I had, I was like, no, no, it's gone. Whatever reason, I go low with that body shot right there. I had been going to the head most of the fight, and I dropped down low. You know, that was a great, you know, right to the, to the fat. I, I don't even know what part of my body that is. I could normally, if I was kind of ripped, I could say, oh, it's in my abdominals or whatnot, but that was a good punch to the, to the gut. It's setting I like it up it. to get caught. Yeah. Jan working down to the body. And now you see him just covering after I had just hit him with a good body shot, and now he's just kind of covering up and trying to survive. 
I knew I was gonna be taller, and that can be uh, an advantage when you're the taller fighter, going and being able to pull down on the on the back of that head and bring knees up. And we clinch up here. Um, I eventually bring up a big knee that gets him in the nose right there. Uh, nice oh, knee. That was a good knee. The knee of reasonable force is what the police academy would use that, I guess, or the. But that was a knee of deadly impact. And he drops, tries to go for the takedown. I love it because he taps due to strikes right now. And that was very fulfilling because when a guy comes out and he talks a lot of trash and he accuses you of being overhyped and not that good, and then you beat that person into submission, I wasn't choking him, I didn't have him in an arm bar. I literally beat him into quitting. That's very fulfilling. After hitting him with that knee and him going down like that and then him tapping due to strikes, it was, it, it was pretty nice. Instantly in my brain, I'm saying, oh crap, I got hurt, take him down. But in my brain, it happened so slow because it hit me. And then once I went for his legs, when he came around me, I didn't even know where he was at. The moment I tap, his left hit me flush in the back of the head, and then my vision went, because I was my eyes were open. I'm, I'm blocking, I'm trying to regain you know, my senses, and all of a sudden, I went blind. And that's when I started tapping. And I sat there on my knees, looking straight, and I was just like, okay, I was waiting. I was kind of like anxious, like, okay, come on, vision, because I'm hearing people, and you know, there's Josh Rosenthal. He's like, you're okay? I'm like, no, I can't see, and all of a sudden, it was weird, it was kind of like a, a trippy, you know, white light coming in, I could see again. The first thing I see is all those jerks in the front row just pointing like, yeah, and they're saying like, yeah, and I was like, I deserve it. I talked a lot of crap on them to get the fight going, and you know, I can take, I have tough skin, but that was kind of like, that was not the first thing I wanted to see when I, my vision came back. I wanted to be like maybe my, my wife or my, my, my kids or something. Like, we love you, daddy. It was no, it was just like the fans of Jan, like, yeah, you suck. And I'm like, no, why? <laughs> I think I closed the book on the fight. It's, he hasn't fought since then. And if he wanted to fight me again, I'd say you need to go and beat somebody before you have an opportunity to fight me again. But, I think the fact that I've pretty much retired him speaks for itself. You know, I don't take anything away from him. Um, could I have survived longer? Yeah, I think I could have, but he was already hitting me so hard. And it wasn't like a lot of his fights where he's just doing this, like he's, you know, trying to break up some peanut shells or something. He was hitting, he was swinging hard and, you know, some of them were connecting and yeah, you know, once, once my vision went, I, you know, I was like, I got to tap. So I give him props for it. Yeah, I'm sure it made him feel good. It would have been too if like we would have gone to the ground and out of arm barred him and made him tap out and scream, you know, I would have celebrated like crazy too. I mean, can't blame the guy. So it was a tough contest. I was really able to show people, you know, that I'm willing to go after after anybody who I step in the cage with and that, you know, next time I'll be in better shape for my next fight. Up next, get ready as two of the region's most confident fighters face off in one of the most surprising, emotional, and brutal fights in showdown history. If you're an MMA fan in the Mountain West, you know all about Stephen Razor Sharp, famous for his outrageous walkouts, neon hair, and aggressive fighting style. He's also known for his background that began on the street well before he entered the cage. I grew up being straight edge in Salt Lake uh, when the straight edge movement was pretty well known because we were a pretty violent group. One of my good buddies ended up going to prison for 14 years. That changed dramatically on how I felt about street fighting and uh, I no longer wanted to fight on the street. I didn't want to end up being in a box for the rest of my life. So since then, I, I get my kicks out of fighting MMA. Although Steve's record isn't perfect, beating Razor Sharp is a prize held high for local fighters. Steve Sharp is a scrappy fighter. I mean, he's mean, 
he gets inside his opponent's heads just to kind of mess with them. And a lot of fighters, it works on. You get inside your opponent's head and they start second guessing themselves. I mean, that's an advantage to have. He's been fighting for years, I mean, way before he got into the cage. You know, a straight edger where they went out into the streets and they fought guys. And so it was natural for him to come into MMA and train what he loved to do naturally. A lot of people are afraid to fight Steve Sharp, unless you're Clay Collard. Clay Collard does not care who you are. He's gonna come in and just put a beating on you. He is one of the most confident kids, I mean, he is a kid, and confident fighters I've ever met. It's amazing. And just will come in here and put a beating on anyone. And he does. Coming out of obscurity to winning a few key fights in 2012, Clay Collard quickly became a crowd favorite. His vicious fighting style and confidence in the ring cut huge waves for his career. And this fight would either earn him a spot as one of the best in the region or would expose him as a one-hit wonder. People didn't know who Clay Collard was before the Justin Buckles fight. I knew who he was because Clay and I are from the same area. I'd seen him fight a few times. I actually went to Scott and said, hey, there's this young kid down in Emory County from a small town. I've seen, I've seen him fight a couple of times. You might want to think about signing him and getting him in here. I didn't really know about Steve Sharp until I was like 18 and already fighting. And then um, I started hearing about him like, Steve Sharp, Steve Sharp. Yeah, Steve Sharp was the shit. He was knocking dudes out. He, everybody was talking about him. He was the man. With one of the region's hottest prospects squaring off against one of its toughest, the matchup sparked immediate attention from fans. As the event drew near, their competitive natures clashed, exposing a fierce rivalry that promised an unforgettable fight. He's been around, he's fought everybody, he thinks he's the top dog and starting to get washed up, starting to get a little old, Steve. Well, Clay, you're right, I, I am old. I'm definitely not washed up, I'm 33. Uh, you're 19, you think you're faster, I think I'm just as fast. Everyone that's ever fought with me says they'll stand with me. I hit harder than you, so we'll see if you're the first guy that actually stands with me. <laughs> Bullshit. I just, I think it's funny, honestly, that Steve Sharp thinks that he can hit harder than me. He is young. He does have heart. He does have that fight in him. But he also has that stupidity where he thinks that he's invincible. And once he gets hit by an old man, he's gonna learn respect for your elders. And welcome inside the UCCU Center in beautiful Orem, Utah, as Showdown Fights presents another outstanding night of mixed martial arts action. Guys, tonight should be a really good night. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Anytime you got Steve and Sharp and Clay Collard on the same card, amazing. But now that they're fighting each other, are you kidding me? These guys are coming out. They're going to be banging. Steve Sharp is the weathered vet, and he says, look, young punk, I'm planning on taking your head off tonight at the Showdown. Well, Clay Collard, he is excited, and he's young, and he's hungry. Both heavy-handed, both got leg kicks. We are ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next fight is a professional catchway bout. It will consist of three five-minute rounds. At the very start of the fight, the way that Clay sat and laid down, it just it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know why. It, it bugged me that he was just so nonchalant, like he didn't even give me any sort of credibility. And like right there, I look at him and I'm like, I'm just gonna come flying across and I'm gonna kick you in the face if you're gonna stay there. Yes, Clay! Clay! I just thought it, it's funny. It, it messes with people, it pisses them off, so that's why I do it. I just sit there and hopefully it bugs them, which it did apparently. If he was gonna stay on the ground, I would have kicked him in the face. Here we go, round one. Wow, Sharp comes right over to him. Right into Clay's kick. Oh, nice right oh, there, smacking huh? the face. Wow, wow. Hey, Collard, man, coming at it. When I started laying into him, like throwing, I was just, every shot I was throwing was catching him. I'm standing southpaw throughout this whole first round. Um, I had combo set up. I thought I would trick him and he would 
he wouldn't anticipate me coming out southpaw. Oh, nice combination. Collar to the wow. knee. But look at Steve Sharp, man. He's, he's eating it. He's playing possum. Watch. Oh, but he got punched with a good one there. Nice little uppercut and another knee and then fuck. Falling on him. Wow. Sharp better get off the cage, though. Yeah. Yeah, Clay Collar's just too big. He hits too hard. He just did what Clay does, and he moves forward and throws punches and bunches. And I don't think his punching power is that strong. I think that he just throws with enormous amount of volume. When I started laying into him, like throwing, I was just, every shot I was throwing was catching him. You can't rope a dope in MMA. Well, here's the deal, man. Sharp said it. You want to stay in a, are you going to stand in, you say you're going to stand and bang with me, but are you really? And now Steve's looking for that <laughs> takedown. So you know that Clay Card was landing some big shots on top of him. He hits hard. He's already bleeding sharp. I think it's fun. I remember right here when he was trying to take me down, I thought it was funny because he was supposed to be the stand-up striker, fighter, and I just laid into him for the first you know, minute and a half, and then he's shooting. So I thought it was funny that he was trying to take me down because I knew he wasn't a wrestler and he wasn't that good on the ground. That blood on the left knee of Collard was there earlier. Started yeah. before the fight. Yeah, probably got it in warming up. Oh, bad move oh, for Razor. Oh, boy. He just pulled Clay Card right down on top of you. I don't know why I was going for a takedown, but whatever. I was in my corner, and that's why. Anytime I'll, I'll look through the cage and I'll see my corner, is usually when I'll go for a takedown. I couldn't hear my corners, but I could hear uh, Ramsey saying, under his armpits and stretch him out. And I, I looked through the cage and I saw him, so I listened to him. I'm trying to get in, trying to get in. I think I jump in the air right about now. Ooh, right here, I think it's coming up. Yeah, right there. Even though he's doing all this damage to me and I'm struggling to find grounds on, on my game plan, as he comes in, I have the mind to say, I <laughs> flip him off. And I'm telling him, I'm actually talking to him. I'm saying, dude, you hit like pussy. And I'm laughing at him. Yeah, I thought that was funny. I think he just did it because he was frustrated and I was whooping his ass. So, like, go ahead and flip me off when I'm on top of you, elbowing and punching you in the face. Like, more power to you, dude. You're a badass for that. Play collar. Hey, laughing. Razor's laughing. He loved it. Did you oh, like he's that not one? laughing he now. Landed, hit him with a big shot Whoa. right there. Doing an elbow. This all materialized from that ill-advised pulling guard, and he pulled Collard right into him. Right. Yeah. And that has been a disaster for him. Oh, now Steve's going to work to get to his feet. Oh, nice shot right there. Collard bombing on him. I'm just teeing off right now. Oh, he's just punishing Ill him. intentions on every single punch. Dude, landing some heavy shots right here. Even though he's rocking me, well, not rocking me, but hitting me with all these punches, he still hasn't hurt me. In my mind, I still was never hurt. And my nose is bleeding, and I think he cut a little bit of my eye. I can't remember, but um, I still didn't feel like he was hitting hard enough for me to defend properly. Oh, you better not try Anderson Silva with Clay Collard. Duh, I've been fighting like that since I was 11, man. Uh, I have old boxing tapes that I was watching a couple days ago, and I do the same, like, bump off the cage and walk at them, hands down, and then just start throwing combos. I do that same stuff in the ring when I was boxing, so I guess it's kind of just been how I fight since the beginning, and I just like hurting people, man. I just like putting it on people. Collar listening to his corners and throwing elbows at Steve like punches. Nice I love left. that. I love, I love seeing them when they listen to the corners. I'm just marching after him, just trying to finish. I'm nailing him with shots. Oh, elbow Another striding Joe. Right oh, oh nice left. Man, Stephen Sharp is tougher than nails. He's eating some big shots. Ten seconds to go in the opener. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Clay Collard looking to finish it in the first round. 
Razor laughing. He's laughing it off. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Clay Collard looking to finish it in the first round. Razor laughing. He's laughing it off. When he's throwing punches at me, I, I feel like maybe I, I was trying to get in his head in the way of saying, dude, you're not punching hard enough. And maybe he's going to overextend. Maybe he's going to give me something by that point. By overextending, saying, oh, yeah, you don't think I can hit hard? And then he really swings. When you're pissed off, that's the worst time to fight. Sharp is just the kind of guy, I don't know. I think I hurt his pride a little bit, and so he's talking shit now. I've always liked Sharp. I always thought he was cool. I had respect going into the fight. Now, like, just the reaction of him. I don't know, he looks like the Goonies guy, man. He looks like the Elephant Man. Like, how can you say I don't hit hard? So, going into the second round, um, honestly, spirits are, are high. I still think that with everything that he's dished out, I'm not hurt. Um, and I can still come out and I can win this. Let's get a look oh, at boy. Steve's face. He's still smiling though. That's the Razor fans know and love. <laughs> wow. He's got his right eyes about swollen shut. Yeah, that's a beat down. He's in a fight. You look at Steve Sharp's face in the corner and after he had just taken that beating from Clay in the first round. I don't know why they let him come out for that second round. But you kind of had that feeling that Sharp, Sharp packs a punch and that he could unleash that and catch Clay at maybe any given moment and maybe ch turn the tide of the fight. But his eyes closed, he's cut up. Um, it didn't look like the same person in, a, in some ways. And it was when people l realized that Clay Collard is not a fluke. He's got his right eyes about swollen shut. Yeah, that's a beat down. He's in a fight and he knows it. He's gonna really have to dig deep in this second round. I honestly was dead, man. That second round come out, I was tired. You can tell I'm tired. I walk out, my hands are down. I'm not moving as much, I'm not throwing as much, I'm not, I'm sick, I'm tired. But my corners were like, he's done, just go out there, put him on him and he'll fall. He don't want any more of this fight, like he's already out of the fight. Oh, his leg kicks. I do still come out as a southpaw. Still moving backwards, but I'm, I'm moving side to side a little bit more. Backs up against the cage, but I'm not just sitting there. I'm trying to, to get out. Oh, power in those punches is amazing. Ooh, nice, nice left. Caught him there. He came out harder the second round. My left hook is one of my, my biggest weapons. I've knocked out quite a few people from a left hook or an overhand right. So in my head right here, uh, starting off the second round, I'm landing more punches. We're, we're a minute into the fight, and I'm landing more punches than him. Um, and I, I feel like this is, okay, this fight's turning around. We're going to land one of these. He's going to drop. I'll get a choke, or I'll get the knockout. He came out a little harder than I thought he would that second round, throwing a little more. Oh, but a nice I uppercut by Steve Sharp right there. And nice an elbow. elbow. I think they'll surprise Clay right there again. That left hook will come right over the top of this cross. So now I'm standing normal stance and I'm throwing left hooks more. See, my left hook, even though my hand's down, it starts out with my left hip, moves forward, and it's like a whipping motion with my, my shoulder and then my arm just follows. It's a weird left hook because like I said, it's, it, it's not really a left hook. It's not uh, an overhand per se because it's, it's my lead hand, but I, I just kind of dip my shoulder and I whip it in, um, but it catches a lot of people. He still just, he keeps walking forward. Oh, oh man, oh, you man. heard that. Cracked it. I'm whip lashing his head back. I don't hit hard. Elbows by freaking Clay Collard, wow. I've never seen Steve in this position ever in my whole life. Ooh, that left. As following Steve's career from his first fight forward, actually having to fight Steve Sharp 
I've never seen him like this before. I mean, Clay Collard is really putting the screws to him and putting on a clinic, putting him against the fence and hitting him with everything that he wants to hit him with. He doesn't want to be there, man. He's running from me. Side right leg of Collard is pretty, but he's up against oh. that fence again. So that's one of those those punches right there where he ended up overexerting himself and I was able to duck under it and be able to get into this body lock. Right here, I'm kind of taking a breather. I'm uh, I've got him in a in a bad position. Obviously, any judge in this position would say, "Oh yeah, Steve's winning this fight. He's got the back of the guy." He's kind of just resting. Now Steve's gonna work. He's got to be careful here because Steve is pretty slick at submissions. Throw my my arm around. I actually thought I had this choke. He just yeah. He threw it on quick, just trying to get something because I was beating on him. Um, it was getting loose right here, so I flip over to the other side to be able to keep keep a hold of him. He throws this choke on so sloppy. He didn't have it at all, so I just popped yeah. right Great out. Great job. Nice job. Great there job. Listening to his corners. Now Collard's coming forward. Now Clay's mad. I'm just ready to knock him out, man. I'm, I've been beating on He's a tough dude. I can't believe I hit him that much without him knocking him out. But I think this is my Anderson Silva moment where I feel like I am that good that I'm going to sit with my back up against the cage and all I have to do is move my head six inches and he cannot touch me. How is he making Clay miss? I am impressed by this 33-year-old. I'm, I'm catching him. I don't know why. I catch him more times than I miss. Ducking and bobbing and weaving, wasn't he? And if it wasn't for how many punches Clay throws, he would miss quite a few and most guys would get tired, but he's used to throwing that many punches that he keep, just keeps coming, keeps coming with them. I'm tired, man. He's tired, he's beat up. I've been throwing punches all around. Oh, nasty elbow. Again. Okay, so here we're kind of standing looking at each other. We're both looking at each other like, who's gonna go down? <laughs> we're blasting each other. I'm sitting there looking at him like, throw a punch, because I'm going to catch you. I wanted to catch him with that left hook so bad. Hands I... straight down. Look at him. Oh. Hands straight down. Are you kidding me? And he eats one, two there. Oh. <laughs> and, and he's tired, and right now he's saying, okay, I got 30 seconds left in the fight, or in the round. If I just go crazy at him for the last 30 seconds, at least I'll win the round. Coming up right here, he throws a few different angled punches. Both their hands are down. Oh. He heard him. He heard him. Coming up right here, he throws a few different angle punches. Both their hands are down. I think I hit him with a straight right left hook or a left hook straight right. Right here, left hook straight. Left hook straight. He heard him. That right was devastating. Blasted Steve Sharp. Wow. And that is oh, it. Wow. Clay wow. Collard wow. defeats Stephen Razor Sharp. Oh my yeah, goodness. I, mean, I, I think, you know, obviously our faces look different. I look like Sloth from Goonies, and he looks like he's just got a bloody nose. But there's no way that he can say that that was an easy fight for him. I don't feel like there's any way that he could say I'm not worthy of a rematch. Um, eventually, I, I, yeah, I, I would love to fight Clay again. I'm out of his league now. You know, this fight, I was testing myself to see, you know, we, to see if I can hang. But after, like, I know I can, and now I'm, I'm way better than I was here. Fight-wise, I'm light years ahead of where I was, where I was during this fight. Who knows what would happen. I think those left hooks and those right overhands could land. I, I need to fight him smarter and not just go in with my, this is what I'm gonna do because this is what I've done in every fight game plan. I'd knock him out even faster. I'd probably knock him out in the first round, first 45 seconds. In the end that night, you have to be mentally there along with being physically there and physically and mentally prepared um, because of the drama that I had and having my daughter in my corner the whole time, 
I, I didn't feel like I was mentally there. But it's weird because you look at my face and, and yet I was stoked. I got to see my daughter who I hadn't been able to see for a long, long time. First of all, my hat's off to Clay. Uh, he came in as a young fighter and fought great. Um, you know, I know my face looks retarded. Um, <laughs> but honestly, right now, I could care less. I got to see my daughter about an hour ago for about a half an hour, and I've seen her five times in six months. So I'm on a high. It feels like I won. And I don't care how ugly my face is. I love my little girl with all my heart. <laughs> I wish I could have her right now. I was on cloud nine, and I still am talking about it now. Like, uh, it, it doesn't matter how many times I'll get punched. The love that I have for my family is huge, and it, it'll never, it'll never change anything like that. Steven, what can we expect from you? Well, I can only cry out of one eye. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, I don't know. I, don't, I honestly don't know how many more fights I got. I, I love to put on a show for all you guys. And even though I, I was caught with some early, early punches, and honestly, half like round one, I was like, man, am I really wanting to do this for another <laughs> 10 minutes? And uh, hey, I, my math's still good. I know it was 10 more minutes after the first round. So, you know, honestly, I love showdown. And... I'll fight here until you guys don't want me to fight anymore. Ah, that'll be never. We always love seeing you in the cage. One more big round of applause for Steven Razor Sharp. <laughs>